Hey guys, how's it going? Sam here and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be creating this environment you can see here using only primitive forms in Maya. Let's get started. So this video is really a follow up from my last video which was the basics of 3D using Maya as an example. Now obviously you can use any 3D software, I have recently been using Blender a lot that is a free alternative. Maya now is unbelievably expensive. So I really recommend if you're going to be starting, start with Blender. Now, the reason I wanted to create something using just primitive shapes is to show how easy and how useful 3D software can be for a 2D artist. Now, I'm not coming from the place where I'm telling you to create game ready assets. This is purely for a 2D artist to use it as a tool to help you create your concepts or your illustrations. So as I start this piece, you're going to be seeing me using basic, the basic primitives, so spheres, cubes, cylinders, that's about it. I do a tiny bit of modeling and all that is is extruding and adjusting uh, the vertices or edges. And again, that is in my first part of how to use the basics of Maya. So if you're already a little bit confused and you're not sure what's going on, I recommend you check that first video out and that will give you a good idea of, of everything I'm using in this video. So the main point of this video is to show how easy you can avoid certain issues that become a problem when you're first starting out and trying to create a scene. So composition, lighting, value structures, the general drawing, creating a form, all of those issues are taken away if you start in 3D. Now I really recommend using this, if nothing else, as a tool to learn how to create form, how to create good compositions because you can adjust them so easily. So I remember when I was first learning, I would spend days if not weeks on an illustration of an environment and in all honesty it went wrong within the first 20 minutes. How many of you have spent hours or weeks on a composition that you end up hating by the time you get to the end of it? It's really common and I think the reason it's really common is because you're making problems really early in the process with the composition, with the forms, with the values, with the lighting that should be blocked in very quickly. So if you have seen professional artists create beautiful illustrations and you watch them create them and within the first couple of brush strokes they look brilliant they are addressing those problems really early on because as a professional you learn to hone your skills and your processes so as you improve things get faster and you can streamline the process so you make the right decisions quicker. Now obviously you can learn to do this purely in 2D but what I recommend is playing around with these primitive shapes in 3D, throwing a scene together and not really viewing it as an illustration but just messing around and trying to create a world just using spheres. So you can see in this scene I have used just spheres and I've misshapen them to create these weird balls but you can instantly start to imagine them as maybe hills or mountains when you start to combine them. Use your imagination with these basic shapes to create something in your mind, doesn't necessarily need to read particularly well for other people, but in your mind about what you would like to do with it once you go into 2D. And by adding all these primitives in as I am now, you can see I'm getting a real time update by creating a render of what me moving those objects around is doing. Now, if you were to do this in 2D, if you're a skilled 2D artist, then great, but this video isn't really aimed at you. What most people are gonna struggle with is being able to do this quickly. So if I was to ask you to block out this scene in 2D and be completely accurate with perspective, with form, with values, with lighting, it will take you a while. Now let's say it's taking you four hours to do that. Well this scene maybe takes an hour to block out in 3D and I can move the camera, I can move objects around. Who is learning more? Theoretically if I'm, I'm saying okay well I'm going to create this form and then I've set this lighting up, now you have created a 2D painting and that's taken you five hours and then that's all you've got, you've got that one 2D painting. If I ask you to change the lighting, you'll be starting again. If after an hour I want to change the lighting in this scene, it's two seconds. I can literally move the light. You'll see me do that at the end of the painting. At the end of creating this scene is move the lighting to see what works best. This is a real-time tool for you to learn how 
these fundamentals of artwork. So I really think that if you use them constructively, use them effectively, you can learn how to paint without ever painting. And that really sounds like a bold statement, but I think it is true. I worked as a manager, design manager, working alongside some really great 2D and 3D artists, and I improved as an artist without actually drawing. Because the reality of it is, art is knowledge. If you have the knowledge of what to do, then you will improve. So the main reason I think that this is really beneficial is because at its core, all objects can be broken down into these really primitive shapes. The human form can be created using cylinders, spheres, and cubes. And if you can understand how to arrange those to create basically anything in the world, then you'll be able to draw them. I think the biggest problem, at least from my issues as an artist, I struggle to draw things when I can't break down how those primitive forms exist in a real space, in perspective, with lighting, with value. If you can work that out, then you solve the problem, you understand how to draw them. And that is the simple truth, that's the trick behind it really. So by using 3D software to create these basic primitive forms to build up into these more complex shapes that you probably can't draw, you're building a visual library, you're building a 3D view of an object rather than a 2D view. So when you draw something, let's say a fruit bowl from still a still life fruit bowl as an example, if you just draw it as you see it, you're creating a, tr a 2D translation of a 3D object. But maybe you're not understanding how that form works. So can you rotate that fruit bowl? Can you change the lighting of that fruit bowl without reference? It's very difficult. But if you create it in 3D and then move that lighting around, you'll start to build a visual library of how those objects react to that lighting situation, how you rotating those objects in the fruit bowl look from different angles. Building on that visual library is going to improve you as an artist. Now moving on from just imagining it as a tool to use to learn, how about using this process for professional work? Well, it's something I do quite a lot because as I mentioned, you can block this scene out in under an hour and I can create a painting in around that time of basic values. It'll be pretty basic, pretty rough around the edges. But what I can't do is if that client says, well, how about we move this and change this lighting? It requires me to go back and redo some of that work. So moving brush strokes, you know, moving layers around in a scene can sometimes add time. It's not necessarily instant, especially if a client's asking for something to be done that's quite dramatic. Whereas in 3D, if someone says, well, can we move the camera down? I can do it in seconds. If someone says, can we move the lighting? I can do it in seconds. If they say they want something bigger or smaller, again, it's seconds. So for client work, it can be very useful. Now, another point to make with this, if you are creating this scene for a client, where do you stop with 3D? And it's a hard one to to discuss. I mean, you can carry on with this, you can texture it, you can make a final render. The only thing I would say, as soon as you start getting into textures, someone asked me recently about Substance Painter, as soon as you start going into programs like that, it's time consuming. It takes up quite a lot of time of you kind of messing around and you might get really brilliant results, but they do take time and often I find getting to the point this piece is at where it's really simple shapes and then painting over it is often much faster. I've done it really recently with a client project and I decided to create it in 3D because they wanted a final illustration that was quite high res and they wanted to be able to zoom into 100% and see details, which instantly makes me think of 3D and they wanted certain objects in the scene such as trees. Now trees in 2D, if you want them high resolution can be very time consuming Obviously, if you're doing quite a brush, um, like textural layer of the trees, that's easy. You can, you can do that really quickly. But if you want them to stand out and read as a stylized tree, that can, that can take time. And I avoided that by creating them in 3D, duplicating them, rotating them, and then basically using some filters in Photoshop and then painting over them in Photoshop to improve 
the uh, the pace of the of the painting. Basically, overall, I believe that this using 3D in this manner will one really help you improve, and two will give you some skill sets to take through to professional work that I I use for my client work. So just before this video finishes, I would like to say that I am currently offering a mentorship program. I have a couple of people that have already signed up, which is absolutely amazing. And it's going to be at a heavily discounted rate just because I am just starting off. So this is going to be tailored completely to the individual student. I'll be doing paint overs of their work as well as providing reviews of their portfolios and offering general tips and advice on how to improve and basically get their first job in the uh, creative industry. So if that is something that interests you, please message me on ArtStation. The link to my ArtStation page will be in the description below. Thank you guys as always for watching and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to see more of my content. Thank you guys, I'll catch you in the next one.